problems can be identified if you have a hole and the hole coincides with the geometry of the flight lines, then you know you have a real hole. Yeah? When you see a, a, a correlation between the hole and the lines of overlap, then you know the pilot was doing too much Gangnam style. <laughs> or it didn't follow the flight path. And I think it did happen here once. Right here. These flight lines have an overlap here. Yeah? So there's two. And then the overlap briefly goes to zero overlap. And then they join back together. So these kind of things are nasty. Because the dream did not come true here. <laughs> Little nightmare. Uh, so if this happens a lot, then you know, then you need to change the topic. So this should not happen very often. Ideally, it never happens. But you know, if the winds, when the plane goes like this, it suddenly makes you know this guy. When uh, in the, this guy went this way, and this guy went this way, so the lasers on the ground go the opposite directions. I mean, it's, it's the same guy, but uh, he comes back and he doesn't remember what 35 kilometers he also had a little. That's right. If you fly with more overlap, you don't get these problems so easily. But if you fly with more overlap and you're trying to fly a 300,000 square kilometer country, <laughs> It's going to take you significantly more time because every bit of overlap counts in terms of how much flight time you have. So they're trying to fly with minimal overlaps to, to maximize the amount they can cover, but sometimes this is the consequence. And, you know, for the flood maps, missing this little piece will probably not make a huge difference of two meters in the flood. Uh, you still you don't want to have that too often. And that's one way I can now tell the difference between a lake. I mean, it could be that there's that then actually overlapping, but there's a lake right there. You know, it could be, but it's not likely. Or a very wet area. It doesn't look like it though. Okay, what about the other thing we generated? The I, I think actually we used too, too fine of a, of a um, we should have done a bit coarser because if you look at it, uh, there's lots of black pixels where we didn't have enough points. And that means these, these pixels here mean also um, that we don't have a whole lot of points per raster cell to do our comparisons in um, elevations now. So I expect it to be, I, I should have taken three meters maybe, or four meters instead of two, to make sure we have bigger areas to check. But here's the difference raster. Remember, we are very conservative here. And you see, we only get the difference raster when we have an overlap. So we don't know the error here, obviously. Even nearby, you don't know the error. So you need some overlap to be able to evaluate how well your flight lines go together. If you could fly perfectly and they just like touching, you would never know if there's any error because you wouldn't have any overlap in your exercise. But this kind of ripple up and down, sometimes it's red, sometimes it's blue, sometimes it's red, sometimes it's blue. That looks kind of good. That's kind of on the ground stuff noise if it goes in both directions. If there's a significant uh, bias in one direction, like 
it, it's, it's always red or it's always blue, then there's more an issue of uh, there being offset. Yeah. So remember, 25 centimeters. So we are below, everywhere below, well below 25 centimeters, except in a few places, and that could just be grasses and so on. If you have occasional stuff like that, that's just a, a dense forest. Uh, it's important uh, to look for larger open areas where that they don't have big blue or red areas. Okay, and now we want to know about the density. Now let's look at the density grids. And those we created this last grid. This time I don't want to forget it. I, when I do the density grids, I want to filter the last return only. Last only. Add. So again, I will, I will merge them all into one. Select my quality directory as my output directory. Uh, yeah, let's do our pixel size a little bit bigger. I want to. I will have to rename this a little bit because I think I renamed I, I named it a bit poorly when I wrote it the first time. What I'm really doing here, this really should be called point count. Because what I'm doing is I'm counting points. So in the future, some future version I will rename density to be point count. And density to be point count divided by area, because that's what density really is. So currently this should be called point count. And so we need to do the mass in our own heads um, when we go to the color options. So I do a false coloring now. Um, I use a four four pixels this time. Huh? Um, do you use four also or five? Five. You use five. Okay, let's use five. And then, for min max, zero three, fifty. Why fifty? Yeah, I told you, density isn't really density. Density should be called point count. So what I'm doing now, I have a 5 by 5 meter area and I will count the number of points and I unfortunately call it density. So, 5 meter by 5 meter and all the last returns that are falling in here will be counted. I know I have about, I'm expecting 2 points per square meter, that's what I want. So if I have two points per square meter and I have five meter by five meter, 
that means I have, you know, 25 square meters, and I expect two for every square meter. I want there to be 50 points in there on average. Not too many, no. Actually, I want there to be 50 points. Not too much on average. Some average, plus minus in the engine areas. So that's why red will significantly. Um, we put zero here. Uh, I, didn't, I think when I first came here, I said put zero there. But why should we put zero there? We could also put 25 here. Then blue would mean it's only one point per square meter. I think currently you put zero there, right? Uh, one could think in the future of maybe putting something that is. So let's, let's follow what, what is currently done. And we give it a name. And the name in this case is arg no density 2 ETS dot ENG. Or maybe make a You should find a, a consistent naming within your group, maybe even within all the groups. That would be even better. I'm not the one to decide on the naming. You know, uh, Charm has been doing a lot of the quality checking, so he probably has some naming conventions he's been using. Because then, if, if you share files across groups, you, you already know what to expect when you open. Now I need to again close all these links. Oh, the output format, ENG. Have I forgotten anything? Well, I always see if I forgot anything when I look at the command line. List of files, as always, here my files, I merge them. Important one, I forgot it for the first time, last only, I take a step size of 5 meters, I compute the density, I make a false color, where 0 to 50 means 0 points in 5 by 5 meters will be blue, 50 points in 5 by 5 meters will be red, 50 points or higher. And I put that in the quality directory with that name. Start. Don't don't quit the tool when we're done because we're gonna make directly another um, raster that looks right. Do you do another raster? You don't? Well, let's make another one, which we name slightly different. We name that density um, four points. And here we put different color options. Now we say 50 is the minimum and 100 is the maximum. Oh, what did I call that? Four, yeah. So now red would mean four and blue means two. So now I want it to be blue and not too much red because red means I have too many points. Uh, of course, in the overlap area, it will be red because that's where I have two contributing strips, each with that two points per square meter. That would be okay, but and everything else seems to stay the same. Angle density is now four points, so from fifty or lower is blue, hundred or higher is red, everything else stays the same. Okay, now 
everything. Those are two, one should work. for the most part. Why does it have these stripes and these stripes? Why is it like deep red and then not so deep red? Deep red, not so deep red. Anybody? Yeah, it's the overlap where I'm deep red. See, it, it matches exactly the overlap area, so it's a deep red because I, I count both strips. Why, why does it change along the strip so much? Why is it not more consistent? Which direction does a plane fly? Like this, and sometimes like this. It goes back and forth. So. And you, 
now yet again you see the, the compression. This is now compressed scan lines. So we are more than two point per square meter. But this looks pretty much what you want. So there's no nothing bad happening. The scanner doesn't miss every second scan line or was configured wrong and produces only half the amount of pulses. Two points per square meter was about what we were going for. So what other quality check? Did I forget any quality checks that we did before? Last control, but we don't have control points here. Oh, maybe we do, but I don't have them here. Um, This is the quality check, and let's see how far we can get with tiling and so on. Was there anything, any other quality check I forgot to do? I did now the last info report, last validate, last overlap, and last grid. That's good, eh? Okay. Okay. So now it's it's that time again to create folders. So I'm creating a folder called tiles raw. I'm creating a folder called tiles ground. Creating a folder called files classified, and I'm creating a folder called files. And actually, what we're going to do maybe. First of all, I'm going to create another folder, and that's new. And I haven't really done that yet, so it's, I'm also going to try it, so you see how I'm trying and experimenting. I'm creating a folder, so tiles, the noise. So we're trying to use last noise to get rid of some of these points in the air that are very isolated from the other points. That does not work for a solid cloud point because those aren't isolated. Those are just like mushrooms in the sky, which we will, you know, we will we'll pluck those mushrooms tomorrow. Um, but for these individual noise points, like we see them in, in the visualization, last noise should work. Okay, but first thing we have to do is compile the data. And for that, our tool of choice. Well, we have not much choice. Our only tool is last tile. Now we will be doing one thing different, and I do it right away before I forget it. Files are flight lines, that's okay. But also, we can apply the file source ID because the ID was already in the file, we've seen that before. And instead of me renumbering it with my own numbers, just based on the file list, I can just use these numbers because maybe they are globally, you know, cleverly chosen, I don't know. But uh, since they're already there, there's no reason to change them. And that's, by the way, a new option um, that your version doesn't have. Actually, nobody's version has it. Only the version of, that you have here has it, because it's not been released yet. That it's in the GUI. It's always been there, but nobody knew about it, because I, I put it there one day and I forgot to document it. And 
yesterday or two days ago, I was thinking, what am I going to do with these files that already have the flight source ID? And then, oh, I have this filter for it already. Why did I never put it somewhere? So now it's here in the, the menu. So we browse into the Arcano 1 telemeter tiles. We add them all. We select our output folder. Now we use as raw. Yeah, you see how uh, it's one kilometer wide, and had it been a different kilometer, it would have been, you know, it would have been right our kilometer because our tiles are also one kilometer wide, but it's not, the one kilometer is not right in the middle, so it's going to create many more tiles than we really need. But usually, these tiles won't be cut in one kilometer, that's just to make it less data. So usually these will be 30 kilometers, and then it doesn't really matter if you shift it left or right. So, this is a very unfortunate, we're going to have a lot of tiles, a lot of buffers compared to the amount of data we have. Uh, but it's only because we have a small test sample data. So I'm adding a buffer. And the base name, remember? So let's call it Agno.plus. And the output format is plus. So everything looks good. Did I forget anything? by flight line and very beautifully the flight lines are preserved. 
Zero, one, two, three, four, no, three, four, five, that's right.